Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist and most of my cardiology I learned at the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Today we are going to learn something about fetal circulation. So let us begin. I would like to divide this presentation into two parts. First the anatomy of fetal circulation, then we are going to discuss the physiology, the physiology of fetal circulation, how the blood circulates between the mother's placenta and the baby's uh, circulatory system. The fetus circulatory system is different from that of the adults in that the lungs do not function like they do in the adults in terms of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. The lungs are in a collapsed state. The function of the lungs is taken up by the mother's placenta which acts as the site for oxygenation of the fetus mixed venous blood. Then we, we have two important shunts. Since the lungs are not functioning in the fetus, the lungs have to be bypassed in order to do that, uh, there is a connection between the pulmonary artery and the descending thoracic aorta by ductus arteriosus. Similarly, there is a shunting of the oxygenated blood through the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart through an opening in the atrium which is known as the foramen ovale. The placenta is attached to the uterus and from the placenta we have the umbilical cord which is connected to the baby. Now let us look at what is inside this umbilical cord. The umbilical cord carries the oxygenated blood from the mother through the umbilical vein. I know the terminology is confusing, but the oxygenated blood from the mother is carried from the placenta to the fetal circulation through the umbilical vein. Whereas the umbilical arteries arising from the iliacs on both sides brings the, brings the deoxygenated or mixed venous blood from the fetus to the mother's placenta for oxygenation. Another important fact we need to remember is that the fetal hemoglobin has a much higher affinity for oxygen compared to that of the adult's hemoglobin. As a result, the fetal hemoglobin can extract oxygen from the mother's blood instead of being oxygenated in the alveoli in the lungs as we have in the adult uh, circulation. There is also another important anatomic uh, structure that is the ductus venosus. That is the placental blood coming through this uh, umbilical vein, part of it is directed to the liver via the portal circulation and then it is going to reach the right uh, atrium while the other part is going through this uh, ductus venosus which joins the inferior vena cava and thus eventually joining the right atrium. The rest of the heart structure is very similar to that of the adults as we have the superior and the inferior vena cava, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the left ventricle, the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Now let us talk about the blood circulation. The oxygenated blood from the placenta reaches the, the fetal circulation through this uh, umbilical vein. As I said, part of it goes through the liver and through the portal system it reaches the right atrium and part of it through the ductus venosus which joins the inferior vena cava, it reaches the right atrium. This oxygenated blood coming from the lower part of the body is preferentially directed through this uh, hole in the atrial septum which is the patent foramen ovale thus redirecting this blood through the 
left atrium, the blood circulates through the left ventricle, then through the aorta and it supplies the blood to the rest of the body. Some of the blood coming from the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava, mostly the deoxygenated blood is preferentially channeled through the right atrium into the right ventricle and into the pulmonary artery. As the blood circulates through the pulmonary artery, part of it is supplying the nutrition to the lungs. They do not function as a respiratory unit at this time and majority of the blood goes through this patent ductus arteriosus. This is a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So, the blood goes through the ductus and it comes through the descending thoracic aorta and through that we have the iliacs from which arises the umbilical arteries. So, there are two umbilical arteries which carry the mixed oxygenated blood. This blood is reaching the placenta where it is oxygenated and again pumped into the umbilical vein and the circulation continues. What happens when the baby is born? Let us explore that in the next slide. As soon as the baby is born, as soon as the baby is born, the lungs expand in the newborn baby. When the lungs expand, the pulmonary vascular resistance drops significantly. With the drop in pulmonary vascular resistance, the left atrial pressure increases. With the increase in the left atrial pressure, the foramen ovale closes because the foramen ovale is like a flap and as the left atrial pressure increases, the flap is closed, thus preventing the blood from the right side of the heart reaching the left side anymore. When the foramen ovale is closed, the venous blood now goes through the right atrium into the right ventricle through the pulmonary arteries into this expanded lung which oxygenates the blood. The increased oxygen level in the blood decreases the prostaglandin which causes the ductus arteriosus to close. Another couple of important words you need to remember all these green words could be potential questions for you in the board exam. Endothelin and prostanoids cause vasoconstriction in the umbilical arteries. These are the umbilical arteries which eventually fade away. So, this is an overview of fetal circulation anatomy and physiology. I hope this has been useful to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Nick Nickham and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like us to prepare a presentation on any other topic in the field of cardiology, please leave us some comments below and we will do the research and present a video on that particular topic. Thank you again so much for watching this video.